So there's this really cool thing on Google. When you do a search, depending on the search criteria, it'll display various widgets that are kind of going to be useful for what you're already searching for. For example, if you were to try to search what is one plus one and go ahead and click search, notice that you get this nice little calculator widget that shows up for you. Same thing if you search weather in California, the keyword weather I think triggers this widget to show up for you. So I want to kind of reproduce that in Next.js and also talk about what are the most performant ways to not bundle all of these widgets in your code and have them dynamically be loaded when you do a search. So to kind of demo this, I have a page here which has a form where a user can basically, you know, type in some information and click search. So here we have a form which calls a server action. The server action basically just takes a search query string and redirects us to the same page pinning that query string so that the React server component can look at this, the search parameters here. And if it includes a plus symbol, we're going to go ahead and show a calculator widget. And if you include a weather search term, it's going to show a weather widget. So, and so what I have is underneath the search form, we have a widget section that takes in all of these booleans. And depending on if one is true or false, it's going to go ahead and display those here. So the reason I'm doing this is I wanted to play around with the dynamic imports that's built into Next.js because obviously if you have 20, 30, 40 widgets, you don't want all this code having to download when the user hits your search page, right? You want this to dynamically be fetched. And one way you can achieve that is by using this dynamic function that you import from next slash dynamic. Now the way this works is you basically just import whatever component that you want from whatever directory. In this case, I am using default exports on these components. So if I were to go to like, so if I were to go here, you'll see I'm doing an export default. I think if you don't use an export default, you probably have to change a little bit with how this works. But nonetheless, what I'm doing is since those are dynamically imported, Next is going to basically do code splitting for us in React under the hood, I guess. And this stuff is only going to load in if you have those particular Booleans set to true. Now to really exemplify this, the calculator component, I added a heavy component, which is about three megabytes of code. And I wanted to use this to verify, is this actually working the way I think it does? All right, so let's go back to the app and I'll just go ahead and do a normal search. I'll say like, what is up? Go ahead and click submit. Notice that it just does a normal search. We don't show anything in the widgets below because I don't have logic to even show results for a normal search. But instead, if you were to ask what is one plus one, I'm going to go ahead and clear this and do a search. Notice that it loads a almost three megabyte script, which has that client component calculator, which also has a bunch of, of that heavy component logic that I had uh, set up. And down below, we basically show that calculator to the user that the user can start interacting with, kind of similar to how Google search is doing it. Um, also, if I say like, what is the weather near me and click submit, that's going to invoke the React server component. It's going to reconfigure what it needs to show. And in this case, it's just showing an image of a weather image. But if you had another client component, you could potentially have this lazy load as well and save some bandwidth for your users. So again, the main benefits of doing this type of approach is when a user first hits this search endpoint, they don't have to load all of that additional component logic. That is going to be lazy loaded when they submit the page, which basically means the page is going to be very performant and load very fast for them. It's going to be a good user experience. And so if you were to go to the lazy loading section of the next docs, there's basically two ways you can kind of achieve the same functionality. You could use this dynamic import, or you can use react.lazy. And then basically you'd have to manually wrap your lazy loaded components with a suspense, right? So this is the way that you had to do it. With like um, if you're using like a single page application with react, but with next, you have these dynamic imports that actually make it really convenient just to dynamically import something and they just have it display uh, on the page like this conditionally. So as I showed you in my example, I'm using a default export, but if you were to use a named export, you can basically wrap it like this. You just do a dot then, you get the module and you just return the name of whatever component or export that you want that's in that file. Honestly, I probably would have picked this approach. Um, I just didn't really think too hard about this example before I made the video. So if whatever I shared in this video was useful to you and you learned something new, be sure to give me a like and leave a comment if this was useful. Also, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join if you want to find a place to hang out with some other developers and ask questions if you're stuck. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.